I'm going to go ahead and start recording now and then, uh, okay. Hi, my name is Andrew. I also go by Droopy Jaws within uh, the OPC community and Twitch. Um, and I wanted to be the first one to say thank you and, uh, welcome to the OP podcast. If you could do us a favor and just tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I am Dizzy Kitten, uh, mostly from Twitch. Um, I tend to stream variety and I also do ASMR. So I've been doing ASMR for over a year now. So I'd say, yeah, mostly do new releases and ASMR for the most part. So <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, so when and how did you start gaming? Gaming. So I've been gaming actually my whole life. Um, my dad introduced me because I got my first computer when I was five. Oh, wow. And I have, um, oh, whoops, I hit my table. <laughs> I have two older brothers. And um, that's kind of like how me and my family bonded was through games, mostly like PC gaming, although I did some console gaming as well. So, um, and I was also homeschooled. So I had a lot of time to play games throughout my whole life. And yeah, so it just kind of carried on with me. And that's, that's how I got into it. <laughs> that's incredible. Um, so like some of the games, um, when you were playing on PC or whether you're playing a console, what kind of games were they on? Uh, like when I was younger? Yeah. Yeah. So I was really young. My mom didn't know like, what I was playing, <laughs> but I was playing things like, um, Half-Life, Unreal Tournament, okay. Quake, Starcraft, Diablo, uh, Age of Empires. Those are just some that or off the top of my head but that's mostly what i was playing on pc oh, that's wonderful so, uh, age of empires mm -hmm. and half-life were uh the two games that i started off on pc really oh, uh. so good <laughs> <laughs> my brothers and my dad had got me started on them you have uh i guess your brothers are probably like really proud of you and your family as well like with everything that you've just those games like blossom into um yeah they are they were very shocked <laughs> <laughs> uh they were like of all the people in the like everyone in the family, they were mm -hmm. surprised that I was the one who ended up in something video game related. Even though I had played games my whole life, they were yeah. just surprised that it was me. <laughs> it's definitely funny how it works sometimes. Um, uh -huh. so yeah. When bringing like um, that love for gaming and everything, how did you first get involved with Twitch? And why Twitch over other platforms like Mixer or YouTube gaming? Well, I got started back in 2013. Twitch was the only live website that i knew of mm -hmm. um you know to stream and whatnot i don't i don't even know when mixer opened up and uh youtube wasn't doing live streaming back then so yeah it was pretty much just twitch i knew of twitch because of league of legends i actually did used to play league of legends and um even though i don't like mobas nowadays um but yeah, it, uh, I knew of it, so I just kind of played like indie games. I was really into indie games at the time when I was in college, and I just wanted it as a way to, like in my off time, to stream and meet some people with similar interests because I'm from Arkansas, and there's just not really any people that like video games and stuff in the same way I do. Um, so I just wanted to make some friends while I was in college. <laughs> that was <And> the main <laughs> It's crazy Thing how I was like, trying to do. just wanting to make some friends playing video games while you're in college turned into being a full-time broadcaster on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, what was kind of yeah. like the pivotal moment or that aha, like, I can do this full-time kind of moment? Was it like a slow ramp up or just like, was there a certain moment that just made you think I could do this? It was, my stream actually grew really fast i think uh i got my partnership and sub button at the time they were like two different things mm -hmm. but i got them both within like a couple months of starting and it was just moving really fast and i was consistently pulling a few hundred viewers at the time and i already had like i want to say maybe 500 subscribers or so and it just it just kept growing it didn't seem like it was you know, um, what was it like going backwards or anything? It just looked like it just kept growing. Yeah, it wasn't. So stagnant. I had it. Yeah, I remember having to have a sit down talk with like my mom and one of my brothers. Like, what do you think of this? Like, do you think that I should put college on hold? Because I was getting ready to go into nursing school. I was doing my prerequisites. 
Uh, and they're like, Sh- should I, should I go into this? And my brother said, go for it. And my mom, uh, luckily my mom is really supportive. I know a lot of streamers have parents that do not agree with streaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't like them doing it. Uh, but she was very supportive. And so, okay. I put my schooling on hold and kind of threw all my eggs in one basket and just kind of went for it. And it turned into something quite big. So I'm really glad it worked out that way. That's incredible. Uh, Mm -hmm. Truly, truly. Um, Do you ever think at any point that you'll go back and finish school or you're just not really at this point in time? Definitely. So I've been in streaming for five years Mm -hmm. and I still enjoy it the same way. And I have no plans on quitting. I think if something, I don't know, if everyone just decided once to not watch me anymore (laughs) and I can't make a job out of it anymore, I would probably go back to school. But as long as my stream is successful um i really enjoy doing it and i've been doing it for so long and that's what i'm used to i am absolutely going to keep doing it i don't i'm not going to drop it for school unless i have to <laughs> <laughs> we would hope so because uh, you have like an amazing audience and um <laughs> now just with that audience do you mm-hmm. does it ever dictate kind of the direction that you take your stream or is it mostly just kind of the content that you want to create I see what you're saying. Uh, so it does. Uh, I kind of get a feel for what my viewers like and kind of move with that a little bit. Like say, oh, a new game comes out and it looks interesting and I play it, but I'm not really getting that same excitement from my viewers. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, okay, maybe this is something that I can play off stream in my own time for me. Um, I, Cause I want to play something that's enjoyable for my viewers as well. Same thing kind of happened with ASMR. I got started on it for fun. And then uh, I got such positive um, responses towards it that I just kept doing it. And they kept requesting I increase the amount of times I do it. And so yeah, I do, I do kind of let it pull me in certain directions because I want to do things that you know, my audience enjoys. If this were a hobby, I'd probably focus more on what I want to do. Mm-hmm. But because it's a job, I do use a mixture of what I want to do and what my viewers want as well. Yeah, it's it's definitely good to have that kind of balance. Um, now, a lot of people on Twitch have basically, uh, a lot of people want to start streaming these days. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were to tell somebody who wanted to be an a- a- ASMR streamer, um, who's never done it before, who's never tried, um, do you have any tips around starting a stream with ASMR and not just gaming? Oh, with ASMR. Because everybody has tips about basically like what you should do to play games, always keep talking, always keep doing this, but yes. ASMR, there's really so not a lot of tips. So tips for ASMR, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, someone asked me this the other day and I'd never actually answered this question before. And I, I had to sit and think about it for a second. Like, what would I recommend? Um, and some people have mentioned some things to me uh, that they don't like other ASM artists doing. So I'll just kind of make a mixture of what I think and what other people have said to me. But, um, I think one thing is you want to silence your house as much as possible. And this is very hard to do. I had to get a new computer case and new computer fans, uh, because it would actually pick up my my computer the sound of it and i would have to like turn off the air like the air conditioning or heat um yeah i have to put one of my cats away because he he wants in my room all the time and i can't have him scratching at the door when i'm doing asmr so i basically have to just soundproof the room just get as quiet as possible a lot of people fall asleep to streaming uh, like asmr Mm -hmm. and so i don't want a loud sound to suddenly happen (laughs) And it wake that person up. That's like my worst fear. That's also why I don't host or raid people generally after my ASMR because I'm afraid it, it will wake people up. That makes sense. Um, mm. I wouldn't have ever thought about that. And I'm sure not a lot of people do. Because they have their volume turned all the way up. And if they fall asleep and I host someone and someone's like, oh my gosh, welcome. Yeah, someone's going to be <laughs> it, like would... absolutely screaming and like playing loud mm-hmm. music, you know. It's a really harsh transition um i think another thing is also someone had brought this up to me and i've noticed it with some people when they do asmr sometimes they stop and like play with their phones and stuff and i think asmr is really it 
it should be very personal. Um, I feel like all attention should be on the viewers in the ASMR. But some ASMRs, I see them like get distracted like with other things. And I just feel like all attention needs to be like on your viewers. Um, just because it's such a, I don't know, it just, it just feels very personal for some reason. Um, and then there also there's the mic thing. And ASMR mics, it, it's very stressful to set up correctly. Um, especially getting a mic that's like stereo because you'll notice with ASMR, like it, it will go from one ear to the other, mm -hmm. depending on where you are. Um, yeah, getting the right microphone and setting that up correctly. Um, I mean, once you got some good sound, I mean, you're pretty set, I feel like. Um, also dimming the lights. Um, I got some adjustable lights and, um, so people can fall asleep, you know, you want to kind of dim your lights a little bit, make it a more like comforting looking atmosphere. <laughs> um, I think, I think those are some of the main things I'd recommend. Those are actually really good tips and stuff that I personally wouldn't have thought of before. <laughs> and, you know, just like having watched a video or, you know, people think that it could, it can be pretty simple, but it sounds like mm -hmm. there's a lot more to it. Um, there really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely I keep like a basket yeah, yeah. full of my ASMR tools, like right <laughs> by me. <laughs> I like that you call them the ASMR tools. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, uh, I have two baskets full. <laughs> <laughs> so during this entire journey of whether you're doing ASMR, whether you're playing games, whether it be indie games or everything, uh, what would you say your biggest and most memorable moment on Twitch has been? Ooh, Do you have one I've or been a couple? I've been asked this several times and uh, I'm always like, gosh, it's so hard. Me having streamed for five years, I, I feel like I have so, so many memorable moments. Um, oh, goodness. I, <laughs> I kind of think of like when I would get massive amounts of support from my community uh no like really specific days i've had quite a few days like this where i've just been really down on myself or something and my community will come back and like cheer me up and and like gift subs to the community and stuff like those those are some of the like crazy like really nice days mm -hmm. um i i can't think of like a like a specific <laughs> a specific day that I can think of or like a moment because there's just so many wonderful moments in my stream um yeah <laughs> there, <laughs> there I certainly are now. yeah because mm -hmm. um like we go through a lot of our content creator streams and we look for like clips and like shining moments and funny moments and mm -hmm. your audience has so many clips um <laughs> yeah they do is, is there like any clip that ever stood out to you or anything like that or is it just like typically just conglomerate of like really fun times in your stream there yeah there's there's so many <laughs> i feel like in a single stream like i feel like i could pull like 20 clips of things that i would like to see again <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so yeah um, currently in the process of trying to put together like highlight videos because just like there's so much so <laughs> at that point it's probably best to have somebody do that <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah that's what i'm having done and so with everything like um you've played so many different games you've been on mm -hmm. twitch for five years now if there might not have been a clip that stands out what about a favorite game has there been a game that stood out oh <laughs> i have a lot of favorite games <laughs> i've played so many um i feel like for this year like three games of course stood out to me i loved god of war 4 uh detroit become human was also really one of my personal favorites i love detroit become human i played it twice all the way through and uh red dead redemption 2 was of course amazing i really enjoyed my playthrough with that i think i got more funny clips through red dead redemption 2 than i have in like years <laughs> like there's just so many it was so good um yeah, also one of my other personal favorite games mm -hmm. is uh inside i really like platformers mm -hmm. and like atmospheric platformers um 
let's see, Nier Automata, uh, Breath of the Wild. I loved Breath of the Wild. <laughs> uh, there's a lot. Hellblade. No one talks about Hellblade, but that one was personally... interesting. Definitely, yeah. That was a really mm -hmm. interesting and they use the play. same microphones that I use for ASMR. Really? So, mm -hmm, to do the voices in each ear. That's really cool. That's mm -hmm. a nice little factoid we probably wouldn't have ever gotten to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was really neat. I really liked it. And so with those being your favorite games to stream, do you ever play games offline? And are there games that you enjoyed more? Like, I know you got a lot of clips from Red Dead, but what mm -hmm. about um, any of the games that you would have enjoyed offline? What are some of your favorite offline games? So I actually don't play games offline too much. Okay. And the reason for this is because since I stream, uh, you know, almost every day, I'm mm. really terrified of burning myself out one day of just like, oh, just so many games and, and just, I don't want to play anymore. I, I'm always very fearful of that happening. Um, but I play a lot of mobile games, like, uh, like very, um, I guess people call it weeby kind of <laughs> uh, mobile games. Uh, I usually play a lot of those off stream because I'm not I'm not normally going to stream mobile games that often. I usually do more like bigger releases. Uh, so mobile games are more like my thing that I do in my time that doesn't burn me out, I guess. <laughs> that definitely makes sense because mm -hmm. uh, too much of any good thing can eventually mm -hmm. be burned out. So um, yeah. definitely makes sense. And with all of that, you know, with five years being on Twitch, not everything can be a perfect moment, a perfect good thing, a perfect clippable mm -hmm. moment. Um, right. Through all of this, were there any hurdles that you experienced with growing your channel that you didn't expect? Whether it be in the beginning mm -hmm. or even after partnership, any of those moments? Beginning or after, like hurdles, like as my stream was growing? Just, yeah, just like in general, were there, like when you first started, were there... Hurdles like uh, with ASMR, you didn't realize you had to silence your room, but for just oh yeah, how much streaming, I had to silence it, yeah. how much those mics are sensitive, I did not expect that. Um, also with you know, of course, putting yourself out there online uh, with tons of people that are pretty much anonymous for mm -hmm. the most part, like people are a lot harsher to you than they would be say in real life. And like, I expected it when I got into it, but it is still hard to get used to that. And it takes a little bit to grow that thick skin and just to not let things get to you because when they, when they get to you, your, uh, your chat can kind of feel that negative energy and it gets like put back on you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when I start getting negative because of someone in chat, the rest of chat starts to become negative. So I have to be very careful about that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. And of course, there's um, there's some of the more darker things that come along with streaming, you know, like swatting. I certainly didn't expect like stuff like that to happen. <laughs> um, or, you know, um, like stalking, like certain viewers becoming very attached to you. Um, I didn't expect that either. Does that typically um, happen often or is that something that's kind of a rare occurrence or is it's actually pretty often. Um, I think uh quite a few streamers do experience it. Um some talk about it more than others, some don't really mention it at all. Uh but yeah, it is kind of a frequent occurrence. Some are worse than others. You know, some eventually like, you know, if you don't respond to them and stuff after a while, they kind of like disappear and then some mm -hmm. are more adamant about it and those are the <laughs> toughies <laughs> um they end up creating a pretty terrifying problem um so yeah i did not expect stuff like that um oh what else um and that's not something that i guess anybody should expect to you know deal with mm -hmm. when they're streaming and it's not something that like it's just terrible and we're we're sorry mm -hmm. that you have to like you know endure that and like go through that and that it's just part of streaming and, and it shouldn't be at all mm -hmm. um now did you go to twitchcon yes i did um so just like kind of changing things around over here uh, mm -hmm. how was twitchcon from like a content creator's perspective and not just maybe 
uh, a viewer that wants to, you know, be Dizzy Kitten or, you know, their Tim the Tap Man or anybody, what was it like being somebody who is in the public eye who has to kind of worry about that? It's very interesting because uh, people would tell me, oh, how is TwitchCon? I'm like, well, it's really hard for me to tell someone how is TwitchCon because it's like a totally different world from like, you know, you mentioned a creator's yeah. perspective versus a viewer. So um, a, a lot of it is more business rather than pleasure for TwitchCon um, because, you know, you're you're signed up for, you know, certain interviews or you know you're doing meet and greets or you're in panels or you know something and trying to stay on schedule and just a meeting with people um although I try to keep it as casual as possible because I hate it when I'm busy and people stop me and they want to say hi or take a picture mm -hmm. and and then I don't want to be like oh no I can't I need to get to my next thing yeah <laughs> I don't like having to do that so yeah um but it is very interesting, and Twitch ha TwitchCon has gotten so big. I remember being at the very first one, and um, I think I had went to how many TwitchCons has there been? Has it been four? I think it's been three. Has it five? Three. Or it might have been four. I thought it was. Well, I I've been around Twitch for about three years, so I might have missed the fourth one, and I know they're okay. going to be having I... one in Europe this year for the first time. Yeah. Which yeah, there's really going to be cool. one in Europe. Um, um, I attended, I was going to say, I attended all of them except for one TwitchCon, but TwitchCon has just become so oversaturated now. It's crazy. It's so cram-packed in there. <laughs> um, there's, yeah, there's just like, it's such a huge concentration. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I could only assume that, you know, being there as like a, a content creator could be, um, you know, it could be a good thing to meet with companies, but also it could be mm -hmm. exhausting at the same time. Um, oh yeah, because you're constantly mm -hmm. stopped, and once one person stops you, then I, I feel like you know you could end up stopped for an hour where yeah. you're at. Um, so yeah, especially like TwitchCon, most people I feel like will know who you are, as opposed to say like a different convention. Yeah, yeah, it's just a lot of getting stopped. <laughs> Definitely a lot different so, than like let's say PAX or E3 or something like right, that. Right, it's a little mm -hmm. more chill i feel like i still meet people that recognize me but it's not as uh is, as intense with meeting people yeah as it is TwitchCon. um now with everything that we've talked about um through mm -hmm. your five years of streaming and everything and whether you've had asmr mics and everything we have to ask like besides opc um besides your chair mm -hmm. or anything like that what's your favorite peripheral that you have whether it be your mic, your keyboard, what's your favorite Ooh, tool to use? That's a really good question. Um, am I able to say my my 3DO mic? Yeah, definitely. Just right that's here. a huge part of it. Yeah, if you could show it, that would be amazing. Let me see. Bring this here. I don't know. I just think these things are so cool and they they're actually like shaped like yeah. ears. And these things are super expensive, but for a good reason. You know, the sound quality is just amazing. It's, oh, I just, I love this thing so much. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. And that's definitely just like a huge part of your craft. It's, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that would definitely make sense. And uh, we truly, truly appreciate, you know, bringing light to a lot of different things that people might, might not realize, um, mm -hmm. whether it be, uh, sound ending your room or you know uh having to worry about yeah. certain things when you stream but uh thank you so much um is there anything yeah, you wanted course. to leave um with us on the op podcast uh any big plans coming soon or maybe remind us of what your twitch and your youtube is i mean we'll include it in the description um i'm trying to think so i don't actually attend too many conventions so uh, as of right now, I don't have any big plans of attending anything. Uh, maybe next TwitchCon, but we'll see the the one that's not in uh, Berlin. <laughs> yeah. Um, since that's pretty far off. Um, but yeah, um, I'm trying to think. So my name is Izzy Kitten on Twitch, and my YouTube, I believe, is uh, is it Izzy Kitten Seven? I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> We'll provide the proper link in the description. It would be totally fine. Okay. Um, yeah. 
again, thank you so much for spending time with mm -hmm. us and uh, really appreciate you being on the OP podcast. Yeah, thank definitely. You. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.